we were told that there'd be a reduction in the amount of Pfizer doses coming to Alberta because of a temporary slowdown in production at one of their facilities. We were still supposed to see anywhere from 20 to 80% of what we were promised during that time. Then we were told that plans had changed yet again. Alberta wasn't going to be getting any vaccines this week at all. On top of that, we'd still suffer a 78% shortfall in the first week of February. But federal officials kept telling us that we'd still get all of the Pfizer vaccine doses that we were promised for the first quarter of this year, 468,000 doses by the end of March. So the message that we received from Ottawa was, don't worry, be happy. And then today, federal officials informed us that we will, in fact, be receiving 63,000 fewer doses in the first quarter. That means 63,000 Albertans will have to wait for their turn to get protected. Now, these folks include most of the people at the highest risk. Because we're still waiting to start giving first doses to folks who are 75 and older, outside of continuing care facilities, plus First Nations folks who are 65 and over. They're the people at the highest risk of severe outcomes, the highest risk of dying from COVID-19. And we need a half million doses for these people. And how many are we getting? This week, we're getting zero doses, zero. We have only enough stock of Moderna right now for second doses that are already committed. And in the next month, to the end of February, we're now, uh, we now expect a bit under 100,000 doses from Pfizer and around 50,000 doses from Moderna. So in theory, we'll have the half million doses that we need for the next phase by the end of March. But given the news over the past week, we have to treat any plan at this time now as tentative. And to add insult to injury, we're now being told that we don't really have a cut if we count every vial as six doses instead of five. But the fact is that we can't rely on getting six doses out of every vial. The vials aren't standardized. Typically, we get six doses out of around three quarters of the, uh, the vials that we receive. And there, that's only if we're using a very specific syringe that adds another constraint on the logistics. With the regular syringe, it's much lower. I'm here to ask our federal partners to come up with a better plan than just making phone calls every day. It's clearly not getting us the vaccines that we need. In the meantime, let me assure all Albertans that as soon as we have doses secured, we will get them into your arms as quickly as possible. Whenever a sixth dose can be safely extracted from a vial, our teams are doing so and have done since the start of the immunization program. Alberta Health, Service, Alberta Health Services public health immunizers are experienced in vaccine management, and with this experience and currently available syringes, they have been able to safely extract a sixth dose from approximately half of the Pfizer vials. This is in line with the numbers that we have heard from other provinces. However, even with our trained professionals, it is not always possible to get six doses from every vial. This is due to many factors, including the global shortage of the type of syringes that would be required to more consistently extract the sixth dose. To achieve six doses per vial, a one cc or one milliliter syringe must be used, and even then, we estimate that the sixth dose can only be achieved about 75% of the time. These types of syringes are currently in short supply globally. AHS does have a provincial supply of these syringes, but more will be needed to immunize all Albertans. If vials are relabeled to indicate six doses, we will always ensure that the correct amount of vaccine will be provided as each dose is drawn. But a sixth dose is not guaranteed, which is something that needs to be considered carefully. Right now, by getting 63,000 less this Q1, this quarter of this calendar year, means 63,000 fewer of those folks in uh, phase 1B being able to get their vaccines at this time and moving on into Q2. 
And then it makes it harder for us to actually plan and rely on the numbers that we're getting from the federal government on what we're going to be getting when we can start rolling out vaccines for phase two and, and not knowing what we're going to be getting in Q2. Um, and it makes it a little bit difficult to understand for all these priority groups. These people all have legitimate claims. They're, they're all at, at risk uh, groups that need the vaccines for us to be able to understand who's at risk first, who needs to, to be going first in Q1 when we're done, phase one, delayed, unfortunately, and, and I guess not even finishing with these 63,000 fewer doses that we're, we're now understanding we're getting. Um, but for us to make decisions on, on, on the phase two priority groups, we need to know how many vaccines we're going to be getting. 